Hi, today I'm going to show you how to do lead core. Um, I'm setting up one of my downrigger rods, and so I'm only going to be doing one color of lead. Um, I use braid backer because I feel like it gives me more line on the reel. Um, so let's get showing how I do that. Um, I use what is called the Willis or lead core knot. Um, base, it's I like it for its simplicity and it is strong, um, especially in the spring here if we do an afternoon trip uh, when you're going shallow to follow the smelt in. I've hooked bottom and it's, it, it's held. <laughs> so let's see here, where the heck is it? There we go, doesn't work. So we're going to start. First things first, you want to slide the sheath off of the lead. Um, this will work for any of the lead core out there I know of. Um, I use the Suffix 832 lead core. I don't know. I just take, you know, six, seven inch piece. Now with the braid backer, what I'll do is I do two half hitches just really loosely and then what I'll do is I'll take my braid backer feed it through the needle and then I'll work it into the sheath Now because I use a heavier gauge, oh crap, because I use a heavier gauge uh, lead core, I have a little heavier duty backer. Um, I use 65 pound braid backer, not entirely for the strength, um, mostly for the fact that it's a little bit thicker and it fits in the sheath better. So then I work the needle. God dang it. I just keep poking through. I work the needle till I hit the lead. I can tell that by okay, so there's the lead. So I have that much more to go. I try to get the the braid as close to the lead as possible. And one reason I love this knot, it's small, it's slim, and it can go through the guides very easy. Let's see how it is. Another half inch or so. Um, some guys say that they've had big kings on and it's caught on the eyes or whatever. I have never had that happen. Um, so then I just work the needle through the braid once I get to the lead. Take that out, then I will just slowly work the braid until it gets really close. And at this point, I pull, take my fingers, I'll grab this and slide the, tighten the sheath around the braid. But one reason I like this knot is you are losing no strength. Uh, and as soon as that braid is through that hole, I will work the first of the two half hitches down. And you want to try to get them, without pulling the actual braid, as close to the end of the lead core as possible. So what this is accomplishing is that the half hitch gives the outer sheath or the Dacron sheath, whatever you want to call it, something to grip onto. So pretty much what happens is as the fish pulls, that knot actually gets tighter and it works like a Chinese finger trap. And some guys accomplish this by putting glue on the end of it. You know, it, I will admit it'll make it Go through the guides a lot easier because you don't have anything 
you know, this does have a little bit of a bump, but I do not like that because I'm a very big believer with salmon and trout that they have a very good sense of smell. So I do not like stinky glue on my line. I've used it, it it's worked, but I feel like, so, as you can see on here, let's, let's try to get, so you just have the two half inches as close to the top as possible. You can pull on this, and that braid ain't going nowhere. And then I'll take this. And we'll get out. Um, part of the reason I do this is it makes it nice and easy in the spring here. I can do spoons on the surface. Because up here near Superior, when the smelts are running and that surface temp, those fish are way up high. So we can be in... I don't know, 45, 60 feet of water. And the fish are down 20, but they want to hit a bait that's almost right on the surface. So it's nice for springtime here. Plus then two on my braid downrigger lines, I can have a lot longer um, fluorocarbon leader. So basically kind of the same deal. Take some lead out of the sheath. But now since I'm just doing fluorocarbon, it's a lot thicker. I just do one loose half hitch and I'm using Seaguar um, STS fluorocarbon which is the salmon trout one uh, 25 pound test um, blood run makes good fluorocarbon uh, P line makes very good fluorocarbon I've used them um, this was just what the one that was cheapest on the thing I usually try to stay about 25, 30 pound test. Uh, the lead core I'm using is 36 pound test. I usually try to make it, you know, as I'm doing stuff like this or, you know, like. So then all I do is I work the fluorocarbon again down to the lead. I think I'm hitting the lead right now. No, I am not. And how you work it down is you hold this part and you basically get, you know, just past it and push because it's it's just a hollow braid. That's all it is. And so just like a Chinese finger trap, you want to loosen it up so it can slide down. There, I'm hitting the braid. Just work it down. And I'll just take the half hitch again. Um, like I said, I like this for one reason, one reason only. I don't have a little tiny metal thing going through my eyelets, and I can have a lot longer leader now. I can have close to, you know, I could put out 50, 60 feet if I really wanted to. I usually do about 25, 30. That way I can have a few, you know, every time you get a big fish, you can retie the knot a few times. So 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, yeah, 36, close enough. And then I'm tying on a good ball bearing swivel with a big wide open gap. Um, I think these ones are the torpedo swivels. Uh, my buddy's moving to Washington, so we had a bunch of his salmon swivels already. This one's a 55 pound test one. Um, I think VMC has a good ball bearing swivel. Dreamweaver makes good ball bearing swivels. And then I'm just using a fisherman's knot. 
that is how I would set up my lead core lines. I don't exactly like lead core. Um, it has its purpose. Like I said here, I'm pretty much this is a downrigger rod. So all I'm really using it for here is like a, a splice. Mm, like, uh, I don't know if I actually ever end up fishing my thought, but no matter what fishing I'm doing, if I'm doing a bunch of splices like this, usually the end splice is the lowest pound test line I got. And then as I'm doing splices, I increase the poundage. And as you're tying all knots, make sure you have water nearby to lubricate it. Because heat and friction, no matter, is the enemy of fluorocarbon and mono. You do not want to wet braid knots, but you do fluorocarbon and mono lines before you cinch them down. And there you go. That's it. So I got about a 36 foot leader with a one color lead core and about 300 yards of braid backer. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I will be doing another flash or fly video um, talking more about techniques. Um, I did a, a fly tying video, showed you kind of the setup I use. Um, but there I'm going to talk about more, you know, um, like what colors to use different times of year and other stuff. Um, if there's any other videos you guys want me to make in the future, let me know. And uh, have a good day.